this is uh, by far the most intricate uh, undertaking we've ever done. Sylvie Concrete is about to attempt the largest continuous concrete pour in company history. This massive undertaking requires a perfectly executed timetable and plan Turn of attack. There's added pressure just because of the sheer size of it that they can't stop it. Could screw up the whole entire pour and uh, end up having to rip out $3 million worth of rebar and concrete. The slightest error in judgment could mean catastrophic failure. This is going to require 700 loads of concrete delivered to this site within a 12 hour period. Uh, truck broke down. Uh... It's going to be a long day. This is like off the charts. That is unacceptable. You will discharge that concrete and get your butt back oh, right no, away. No, 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 no. This is an incredible feat, something we haven't done before. The Sylvie team meets one last time to fine-tune every detail and button up preparations. Sylvie will utilize three of their central mix plants, located in Morrisville, Englishtown, and Brick, to provide the more than 7,000 yards of concrete the job requires. Transporting the concrete to the job site from as far as 35 miles away means that everything from traffic patterns, materials, spare parts, and truck repair must all have backup plans in place. Director of Dispatch, Jeff Davis, lays out the plan of attack. I would like, the way I'm planning is to have 40 trucks there by 545 lined up on that road so we can start putting them in, if we can get them in there. Now what this doesn't account for is any problems on the job site. This doesn't, this doesn't account for trucks going out of service or drivers not showing up the morning of. The team worries about everything material stockpiles, driver's transportation, and how much stress the plants can take. I don't think the problem's gonna be at the mechanical plant. Okay. Staging the trucks just right, that's gonna be the issue. And getting those people away from the washout pit over there, and that's what time I, I'm pretty confident the plants will do their job. Okay. The team needs to examine every possibility, even the ones they don't want to think about, the worst case scenarios. What's, what's the worst case, Kristen? 12 hours, when drivers start calling time. That's the part that we, we know 30% have said they'll stay. Legally, drivers are only allowed to work 12 hours in a day. If the team encounters a major snag in their plans and the poor takes longer than those 12 hours, drivers will be forced to call time, leaving Sylvie no way to transport their concrete to the site. VP of Sales, Toby Rich, checks in on the construction crew to make sure all the last minute details are taken care of. Well, it's an acre of concrete, a little over an acre of concrete, actually 49,000 square feet, four feet thick. Uh, the reason they have so much concrete and such a strong base and so much rebar in the structures is because they designed this to last 10,000 years. That's the plan that they have for this place. So uh, pretty elaborate, everything is first class. The foundation will provide the base for a massive Hindu temple. It's gonna be 40 foot high walls, a foot thick, and then a slab on top of that, and then another 40 foot high wall, a foot thick, with another slab on top of that. On top of that, they're gonna put a lot of intricate carvings uh, that are very similar to the temple building that we did a couple of years ago. Uh, we're gonna be cycling over 106 trucks through this area, uh, and like I said, it's gonna be done over a period of about 12 hours. It looks like to me they're pretty close to having this place uh, ready to go. Uh, they've dug the washout pit, which uh, has to accommodate about between 20 and 40 trucks. Uh, that have to clean their chutes before they go back to the yard. Uh, that's been completed. That was one of the last things they, that they uh, were trying to get done. Uh, all the ground looks like it's been stabilized for the most part, so uh, we're pretty well good to go right now. Meanwhile, back in Morrisville, plant manager Frank King double checks everything and takes on the last stockpiles of materials. Seagus delivering a, uh, in the industry is called a high range water reducer. And what that allows us to do is produce a very wet flowable concrete uh, without the addition of extra water. And uh, that chemical allows us to maintain our strength of the concrete, um, whereas adding water would, would sacrifice the strength and durability of concrete. And we try to anticipate every scenario and have uh, backup and tertiary 
uh, plans in place. However, sometimes uh, things do go wrong and, and we do have to react to them. Lead dispatcher Jeff Davis pushes to finish the day's operations and make sure everything yeah, is in place. Like well, the first driver starting at 4.50, we're going to start loading at 5 after 5. We're wrapping up now, finishing up customers now, yep. trying to get drivers in the right there. spot, trucks in the right spot, get them back home so then they can get a, the full 12, 13, 14 hours of sleep so they can come and run the whole day tomorrow. It's 4 a.m. and plant manager Frank King begins his pre-trip checks of the plants. No one has to tell him what is at stake. Um, good. We found a few small things last night um, on the final walkthrough and we got them corrected. So we just uh, we started up our equipment here, make sure everything's tracking right because we had to change uh, some rollers out. But, you know, we're doing three plants today uh, to hit this job and um, it's running the plant as pretty much a maximum capacity for 12 hours. So uh, they're designed to do it, but again, it's been a long time since we've worked it that hard. Morrisville will be the first plant on site. Drivers arrive and begin checking over their trucks and tickets. The uh, logistics, uh, the material supply chain is a, a critical portion. We have to make sure we have the materials when we're ready to batch the concrete, the cement, the sand, the stone, uh, all time deliveries and storage in the plant. So setting all that up prior to the pour and making sure it comes off without a hitch is, is critical because we're moving so much material in such a short period of time. In dispatch, Jeff Davis is feeling the pressure to have his first 40 trucks on site in time to start the pour. I need 98, I need 78, these guys gotta hustle. Some of the drivers are running late. Jeff calls a last minute audible in an effort to keep things moving. Okay, now, here, hold on a second guys because these other guys are late. We're getting the guys back from English Town and Marsville now. I don't want to put these slow pokes in there until we have room. So if we get the fast guys coming back, we're going to slot them in, get them out of there, and then we'll take the slow guys as we can. I want the fast guys in and out of there. Okay, thank you. To make matters worse, some of the trucks don't have their keys in them. We need keys for trucks. Yes, there, we got one, uh, John Thompson's company right now, apparently 97, 1, 99, and 77, didn't have keys in them. Eric said he gave two guys keys, so we need two more keys to get these other trucks started and going. I don't care about you getting them back, I want the keys out there now. Get them out there to get these trucks started. 30 miles to the east in English Town, plant manager Eric Miller conducts his own pre-trip check of the plant. To get ready for today's pour, we uh, spent a lot of extra hours on maintenance, changed out some things that normally we'd wait till they break. We, you know, we tried being preemptive with it, and uh, just spent a lot of uh, time paying attention to details. It's the smallest thing that's going to screw us today. Okay, Bill, we're starting. Wait up your load. The sky is still dark as the first trucks roll onto the site, ahead of schedule, but just barely. Hindu priests bless the project and toss gold coins into the foundation to start the pour. The trucks will be feeding five pumper trucks spread around the edges of the site. They will offload their concrete, proceed to the washout area, and then back to the plant for another load. This morning we are about an hour into the uh, start of the pour. We're well ahead of schedule where we thought we'd be. First of all, our plants are uh, extremely modern, central mix plants, uh, all automated with the latest technology, so our plants are very uh, high capacity plants. Our trucks, we bought the best trucks in the business, we believe, we run the Oshkosh trucks, um, and we spend a lot of time training our drivers. So. We have uh, the best team and the best equipment to be able to handle this. In order to hit their hourly projections and stay within their 12-hour time frame, the team will need to empty a full truck of concrete every 66 seconds. Most of the, the uh, upper management of Sylvie Concrete has been with Sylvie for over 20 years. All of us know our jobs very well. We work very well together. Uh, we had meetings uh, 
two meetings a week for the last two months going through every possible scenario of what could happen out here and how we would react to it, uh, including having spares for almost everything at our plant, spare motors, spare belts, uh, on, a, on a low boy so we could take them to a plant if we needed to right away. Uh, it was a well thought out and uh, well executed uh, plan. Our concern was being able to supply the job uh, at the rate that uh, the pump trucks would require. Uh, that meant uh, amassing uh, not only the material to pour that amount of concrete, uh, but also the, the trucks that we needed to do that. There's a, a fly ash shortage in the Northeast right now because of certain uh, manufacturing facilities that have gone down for repair and whatnot. So We uh, stockpiled 55 tractor trail loads of fly ash uh, because the fly ash source is three hours away. This, this pour required as much fly ash as it did cement and because of the uh, shortage here it was a real challenge to get enough fly ash in for this pour to uh, be able to do it. We uh, brought in uh, all kinds of aggregates in the last uh, four weeks to stockpile to have enough aggregates for the day and we actually loaded up a, uh, an 8,000 gallon uh, water truck just in case we had a problem with any of our wells. 2013 out the door. 2013 out the door. Keep up the good work everybody. Keep it up. Keep up the good work everybody. Keep it up. The sun is barely above the horizon and the Sylvie crew has just been thrown their first curveball. Uh, truck broke down. Uh, it's been there for about 45 minutes. They're gonna tow them up to the uh, pump five and uh, dump them off. Go around the bend, you're gonna see a barrel that says three, pull in there. Well, we had a truck go down as it came into the, uh, and the funny thing is, is it blocked the entrance. So we had another truck push that truck out of the way. Uh, we had a, our mechanics on uh, on the site, then they came over and, and uh, uh, attended to the truck. The wrecker came out, towed the truck to the pump. We had another truck uh, with the hydraulic hoses hook up to that truck uh, so we could turn the barrel and we ended up uh, discharging the truck into the pump. We anticipated that we might have some trucks go down either on the way to the job or on the job and so we planned to uh, take care of that if it, it, if it occurred. One breakdown, but uh, you want to race race cars, you're going to blow a few engines, right? Preparation, planning, and ingenuity has allowed the team to keep moving without losing any real time. The real heart and soul of the day are the men behind the wheel, the drivers. The job requires 106 of them to work quickly and efficiently, shaving time wherever they can. I've never been in a project this big. This is, this is like off the charts. Well, being a concrete driver, it's, 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 driving is a very small part of the job. It's, it's actually, you're uh, operating a piece of equipment rather than driving a truck. And there is a skill to pouring. Uh, when we're transporting concrete that we're delivering today, it's extremely wet concrete, so we have to be extra cautious. Uh, if somebody stops in front of us or a light changes to red, if we slam our brakes on, we actually spill the concrete out of the front of the truck because it has a tendency to surge forward. It's kind of like carrying water almost. And if you slam your brakes on, it pushes out of the front of the truck. So maybe you have to drive extremely carefully today. They they knew we were gonna have probably you know a couple of mishaps today, so they had crews ready that were you know able to come out and uh, clean up our spills. So that was one right there. I just. I seen another one on that ramp. Okay, go to the right, pump three. That's where I've been all day. <laughs> and you know where to go. Yeah. Back in Robbinsville, the Sylvie crew has just managed to cross the halfway mark. 2,400 yards in, not a one single rejection yet, and uh, going very well on the consistency point of view. Very pumpable mix. Water cement ratio is 0.38 with a 50 50 cement and flyers. Type 1, type 2 cement. 50% class F flyers, so it's going like uh, pretty, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, going above and beyond the expectation. 
I got uh, three quality control guys at the plant from all three plants. Initially, we had four at the plants uh, because of the South Plainfield, but now we got three at the plant and three on the job site. We got a staging area. We are checking every single load going be going to the pump. So, by and large, there is no problem at all. I'm really, really happy to report that. We actually uh, modeled, uh, based on historical data, uh, computer modeled uh, each phase of the process of loading a truck, uh, washing a truck down, ticketing a truck, and then we looked at it and said, where can we cut a minute or two minutes from each part of that process? Because with this many trucks, over 700 truckloads of material, an extra minute uh, for each one of those guys adds up to uh, you know a lot of a lot of hours that we. Um, could get out early. Uh, we are very happy that we selected Silvi Concrete uh, to supply the concrete for this facility because a designer wanted to ensure that the entire wrap foundation is done with the monolithic core. So we chose Silvi to do the job and I'm happy we chose them because the thing is working out good. With the sun setting, the team quickly begins to approach their worst case scenario. Drivers hours. The biggest challenge for the day is uh, driver's hour service because right now federal DOT mandates that after 12 hours the driver's basically done for the day. So trying to compress 7,200 yards into a 12 hour driving day is a challenge. Slowly, Sylvie begins to lose their trucks as drivers hit their maximum hours. Well, as we speak, I'm going on to my uh, 12 hour. Yeah, we're heading back to South Plainfield for a time. Okay, 1238 heading back to South Plainfield for the last holiday. It's like the fourth quarter of a football ah. game. Everybody's tired. It's been a long, long game. But this is when you really got to gut it out. This is when all the wind sprints really pay and all the planning pays off. So we're probably in the fourth quarter here. We're pressing hard, but uh, we hope to have it done by sunset. Although most of the team has been working since 4 a.m., quitting is not an option. The presidents, John and Larry Sylvie, refuse to leave their team shorthanded, along with every single other team member. They jump in and do whatever it takes to push trucks through faster. Uh, it's funny, 12 hours ago we were watching the sun come up over there, and now we're watching it go down over there. Two minute warning. Finally, the contractor is satisfied. They have what they need. You're done. You're finished. Up concrete. Ten more minutes, we're out of here. Biggest one day we've ever had. It's the biggest single pour we've ever had. One for the record books, guys. I don't know. I guess it's okay, you guys, thank, thank you very much again. I've been here before. I appreciate everyone's help. Awesome job. No accidents. Everything worked out really well. It was all because of you guys. I appreciate it.